from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Like the Show on this Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind, anything we discussed on the air this week, anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass. Just call 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yo, Adrian. Hey, how you doing, Dad? I'm okay, sir. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about something you talked about earlier, um, about, you know, how you gave us uh, all the, the green light to uh, start going on the uh, Internet dating? Yes, and become a complete predator. A- exactly. Exactly. I- I've been doing it for a while. I've been a listener of yours for a very long time. Uh, I've been doing it for a while, and it's definitely... Everything you say it is, everything that the uh, the survey uh, says it is. If I have not gotten laid on the first date, I would get laid on the second date all the time. I'm I'm 38 years old. Earlier this year, I met a girl that was uh, she was 20 years old, beautiful, beautiful. First date, I got laid. To this day, she's still a booty call. I just took her out for her 21st birthday the other day. So it's a good place to, 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 you know, fill up your black book with girls that will put out. Yeah, what's amazing to me is these women put all this flowery language about wanting to find a soulmate. And, you know, they, they want somebody to drink wine with by the fire and walk hand in hand into the sunset. Uh, but what's really the truth is that these are horny women looking to get laid. And clearly they don't feel good about saying that. Absolutely. Some of them will even say on their app, they'll say something like, oh, I don't want any players, uh, no liars, no cheaters. No, no. Hey, come on, man. Girls by the way, that. by the way, let me translate for you. When a woman says in her profile, in an online dating profile, that uh-huh. she doesn't want any players, liars, or cheaters, you know why she's saying that? Because that's all she dates. She likes the bad boys. That's all she's been dating. I mean, why else would she even say that? <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, Tom. And, and you know what? I, I wanted to, to kind of, since I've been doing it for a while, I, I wanted to kind of get on and say this because uh, since you gave us, you know, all your sons the green light to, to start going on there and, 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 and dating, I wanted to kind of mention this so, so that they won't do a lot of the mistakes that I did when I first started doing it and something that could save them a lot of time and money because that's what you're about, you know, getting us laid for the least amount of money. Yeah. Okay. One thing you should never do, is set up like like a date date, you know, where, okay, let's go to the movies, let's go here, let's go there, because you don't really know. I mean, it might be a picture that's a few years old, okay? So, so I mean, set up coffee first. If you meet them and they turn out to be nice, you can say, hey, let's, let's blow this popcorn down. Let's, let's go out and have a, a drink, and then it goes from there. You know, otherwise, if she turns out to be ugly, you know, you sip your coffee, you say, thank you very much, you get in your car, and you get out of there. Look at that. So you've got ways of uh, working those chicks. Oh, I just think I just uh-huh. think those chicks are there to be taken advantage of. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and another thing what I do sometimes, too, is, is all, ma- make sure you get there before they do, okay? Park in front of the place with a pair of binoculars or just make sure you can see them walk into the place. So if you see them walk, some chicks walking in, you just peel out of that, out of there, and you're gone. How but great if you is see that? Some nice looking girl going in your all. Whoo, that's it. You get out and you come in, you meet him. Look at you. 
<laughs> Those are a couple, you know, a couple of the things that that you know the, the listeners, you know, are, are you know your sons would really, really uh, benefit from, and not waste time, you know. And then never ask a girl where she wants to go. I mean, you got to take control. Yes. I mean, whenever I, I was on a date and asked a girl where they want to go, they always pick the most expensive place. You know, you don't do that. No, always tell them where you're going to go, and then have a predetermined time uh, where if you're not getting laid, you're going to get out of there. <laughs> Yeah, or I like yeah. what you always say. Yeah, you ask them, hey, what time do you eat dinner? They tell you 8 o'clock. You say, okay, I'll pick you up at 9. Yeah, right. <laughs> you should be done by then. That's what I said to them. You should be done by then. <laughs> exactly. You know, Tom, so, so anyways, you know, I'm glad you gave us all the green light um, uh, for that uh, Internet dating. It really is a place to get laid really quick. And, and like I said, it, it, if I didn't get laid on the first date, I got laid on the second date. And, and uh, all types of women, young women, I mean, it's great to, to be – you know, in your late thirties and dating girls that are in their early twenties. You know, and, and and here's another thing: you could you could lie about whatever you're doing. Like like you could tell them you're a fireman, and just like you always say, by the time they find out that you're not a fireman, well, guess what? You've moved on to the next victim. Exactly. <laughs> As you can see, I've learned a lot, Tom. I love that, Adrian. I'm very proud. Thank you very much, and please, I've been listening to you for so long. Can you take me out old, old school style? Old, old school. Here it comes. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Martin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hello. Hey, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yeah, hi, I'm speaking to Tom. Obviously, uh, what do you think? Are you about sure? Those, yes. What do you guys think about the pregnancy-only parking? Sounds like they're just like it's a disability. I, saw I, the I tell the guys. I tell the guys you park right in that space. Don't worry about it. Oh yeah, no, I did that. Some pregnant lady was yelling at me. I was like, "Do you have a disability?" No. So shut the f up, basically. Yes. That's Besides, those, those those big <laughs> hogs, uh, they, they could use to park Literally. in the back of the lot well, and waddle looked, their way into the store. Absolutely. I don't think she was pregnant. I think she was just, you know, thick, as she called it. Yeah. Yeah. She was yeah. thick in the head. <laughs> I know what you're saying, Tom. I'm telling you, for the last guy that just called in, I'm telling you, he's 100% right about that. Those ads are just crazy. I checked out that Craigslist. They're like, I don't want a boy. I, I want a boyfriend. I want somebody to whine and dime me. And then again, they're in the no strings attached you know, section. Right. <laughs> What's up with that crap? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. By There's the way, the women want to be wine and dine. Look like they've done enough dining for one lifetime. You ever look yeah. at those pictures? Yeah, I know what you're saying, man. Oh, Some my of these pictures God. are like 10 years old. Uh, but not only that, these women are huge. They're absolutely yeah. huge. Like I swear to God, they shouldn't be pr promoting online. They should be posting on a billboard. <laughs> Literally, that's how big they are. Oh, my God, they couldn't even send you, like, a little uh, video of themselves because they haven't done cell phone cameras in HD yet. <laughs> Dag with them, man. They need white screen. That's exactly that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm telling you, Tom. So for anybody that actually thinks that's reasonably parking spaces, oh, my God, I'm telling you. See, I actually have a funny picture that they have online. Like, why do you think we need these parking spaces? Break your spine, you'll find out. That's for the disability one. So that, that's a reasonable disability. Having a broken spine, come on. Right, but not being exactly. pregnant. Pregnant is not a disability. You put yourself in that predicament. My boys park in the maternity spaces. Basically, you know? It's like, why don't, why don't we have a guys-only parking spot? You know? We should. <laughs> I, you know, I'm all in favor. <laughs> You know, it's like, let the females walk why, or Or why limit it to pregnant women? How about all fat people get a parking space? <laughs> they don't need parking spaces. They need to walk walk there, man. <laughs> <laughs> they need to walk there. Come on, look at them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think that the spaces for the, uh, the waddlers ought to be in the back of the parking lot. I'm telling you, man. They shouldn't even be allowed in public. I'm telling you. That's a whole other story. Especially Get when you see cardio really in. big girls and you're saying, oh, you should whine and dine me. You should be happy to be with me. I was like, did you look, you look in the mirror lately? God, <laughs> you should be happy for me to talk to you. Boy, you're not kidding about that, Martin. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Vincent on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Just 
uh, hanging out here, man. I just got off my crap hole job, and uh, I know you're not a lawyer, but I just figured I'd give you a call, let you know about a uh, little situation there. Uh, basically, over the last three years, I've been pretty much, uh, uh, I'd say, harassed about my body, uh, about a lot of different things. And to give you the basic How idea, so? Well, basically, I wouldn't say that I have, like, a super receding hairline, um, but uh, I got a little, a couple little cups on each side heading back, and my manager just last week told me I needed Rogaine in front of the whole office. It was great times, man. And why are you uh, still working there? That's exactly why I'm calling you. In fact, uh, I'm actually on my way out starting Monday and uh, thinking about suing the company for Forget all suing them. Forget it. You know what? First of all, you don't have a case. Okay? Sexual harassment is the harassment that has been made illegal. Making fun right. of people because of the way they look, that's still legal. Okay? Right. Don't waste your time with a lawsuit. Get another job. Buck up. Well, what I'm talking about is retaliation, Rob. Forget uh, retaliation. The best retaliation is to go to another company and get a better job that pays more. Living well is the best revenge. Take it from somebody who worked his way up from the very bottom to the top. Wasting your time on grudges and trying to get back at people will only drag you down in the long run. I put hear the you, man. energy Put the energy into being better at what you do. And getting a better job. Man, well, I, I got to say, uh, Tom, that uh, completely opposite of what I expected, but uh, equally as valuable. And I appreciate the advice. I, um, you know, I, I kind of figured I'd get the I'm not a lawyer type of deal. get the lawyer thing because I've heard that on your show many times. But, you know, what you said to me makes sense. So I you would be wasting your time and money seeing a lawyer in this case, because in my opinion, as a layman, there's no case. You'd have to go to the real ambulance chasers to get somebody to take this case. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually seeing that now. Trust, now me I when I, trust me when I tell you. The reason I am so successful today, it started with my father telling me I was never going to succeed. And then it continued with a bunch of two-bit employers I've worked for over the years. Um, the, when I was 15, the program director in Babylon, New York, of a radio station, a little thousand watt radio station on Long Island, and he said that I, I should look for another profession because I had a speech impediment, he said, and I had a lousy voice, and I would never make it. By the way, this guy is now living in retirement as a ham radio operator. He's not exactly a big wig in the radio business. I then moved on to uh, the various people who lied to me in any number of ways with first names like Ken and Fred, and they know who they are. Uh, who treated me like crap or just out and out lied to me. And the re the way I've gotten back at them is these guys are not on the radio business anymore. And another guy named Al, by the way, same thing, Al, and you know who you are. All these, Al, a former program director who uh, carried my show, told me that I wasn't as good as I used to be and that I would never succeed again in Los Angeles after I'd been on in Los Angeles previously. So I'm now the number one afternoon show among men in Los Angeles. Where's Al now? Gone. So the point I'm making to you is that as you go, people are going to find ways to look for your Achilles heel, to look for your weak spot. This is the test where you have to stand up to the test and move up the ladder. Right. Well, that's... Um... That's definitely some good advice, man, and I uh, I absolutely appreciate it. You know, it's uh, it's a pleasure being on uh, the biggest radio audience, in, in my opinion, as far as the most uh, realistic one uh, in the nation, as far as demographically speaking. And, uh, you know, you're doing good work out there, Tom, so thank you very much, sir. If you could take me out with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus. Of course I can, Vincent. Here you go. Jesus. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800. Tom. You are the most repulsive person I've ever heard on the radio. Well, thank you very much. I take that as a compliment. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. 1 800 5800. Tom. 
number. Continue with your telephone calls about anything at all. Let's say hello to Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Tom, I wanted to talk about these uh, supermarkets, and I got one uh, right around the corner from me here opening up uh, this new uh, Fresh and Easy. Yeah. I was at this uh, I was at the market the other day, these uh, markets that are built for chicks. I say it's about time to get one of these smaller places that's uh, built for us guys. We don't have to wander around looking for crap. What a great idea. I like it. Just and guys, you know, with unhealthy food, no salad. <laughs> and then these of... fat uh, heifers walking around with pregnant and you know, their unwashed hair at 10 in the morning washing uh, you know, Oprah and crap like that. It's really absolutely, uh, absolutely no organic merchandise whatsoever. Is there going to be a fresh and easy club? I'll have to ask when the uh, meetings are. <laughs> hey, Tom, congratulations on your latest trend. Will you take me out uh, Lacey Peterson style? Well, that would be tasteless, Andrew, of course. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Fernando on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Dad? Great, uh, sir. First of all, I'm sorry. I'd just like to first of all say thank you for the advice you gave me four years ago. Uh, I'm pretty sure you won't remember, but uh, just like the other caller, you were telling him that revenge is not the answer. you got to use that turn around and become successful and you put that in my head from the day that i talked to you and i use that you know towards a, a positive now i'm financially secure for the rest of my life but at that time oh, i was I love so that. well i was so focused on getting back on my ex because basically her mom introduced her to her boss and basically, she was she would she was taking it for me. I was supposed to get married. I was young and dumb at the time, and it almost cost me my career. Now, last year was the best year I ever made, you know, financially in my in my life. I made two hundred grand last year, and this year I'm I'm at one eighty. And I'm pretty sure I can probably break two hundred this year again. Good for and you. Thanks to, thanks to you, Dad. I mean, I, I, I like I said, I'm speechless because I was just I'm almost on the same spot. Driving on the freeway where I had spoke to you, and I can't even get any. It can't even get any better. You're talking about this topic, about how you should just turn around, just grab it, and just swallow it, and just use that, and just become a way better person. Because revenge is the best. You know, success. Success. I'm sorry. I'm just a little nervous. Success is the best revenge out there. It is the best revenge. There's no doubt about it. And uh, thank you for mentioning that, friend. I know I'm glad I was helpful to you, but uh, you know. If it wasn't for the negative feedback I got from my dad and this guy Dennis and Ken and Al, you all know who you are. Rob? Oh, let's put Rob in there, too. Rob? Yeah. By the way, none of these people are in the radio business anymore. These are all the people who told well except for my dad who never made it in the radio business these are all the people who told me i would never make it or i stunk or they lied to me or they treated me like crap and they all get to sit home now while i make a multi-million dollar salary and i uh, i became a multi-millionaire because every time one of these bastards lied to me or treated me like i was less than something uh, it just motivated me to get better all the time. I didn't need to get revenge against Ken, for example. I'll never talk to the guy again, and I'll never do business with him again. But the fact is, here is somebody who is just a blatant, balls-to-the-wall liar. I'm just using first names. Could be Ken anybody. Ken knows who he is. Oh, yeah. Ken and Al and Fred and Dennis. All of you. All of you, hope you're all enjoying sitting at home while I'm still here at the studio making money you could only dream of. You all know who you are. I didn't need to put sugar in these guys' gas tanks or make prank calls to their house or order pizzas for them to be delivered at 2 in the morning. I didn't have to do that because nothing pisses them off more than the fact that they're now 
spending more time at home with their families while I'm down here at the radio station making major coin. And I know these guys are out there, and there are people who know who I'm talking about, and word will get back to them. I want them all to know, I hope you're having a nice day, boys. I hope you are, all of you, all of you. And trust me, there's a few more of you who haven't gotten your comeuppance yet, but it's coming. And I don't have to do a thing. I don't have to lift a finger. Because every one of you is incompetent. And, and especially those of you who told me that I didn't have it, or I didn't know what I was doing, or I wasn't any good, or started yelling at me cursing at me, lying to me, treating me like crap. Every one of you was wrong. And the fact that you knew that little about talent, the fact that you knew that little about radio, that is why most of you are sitting home right now listening to me or hearing this on a podcast or over the Internet or wherever you're hearing it. You all know who you are. And it's because you all treated me like crap that I'm sitting here now. That's why I tell people, don't waste your time on revenge. Don't waste your time on it. This is my revenge. I'm sitting with the number one show among men in afternoon drive in the most important radio market in the United States of America, making a seven-figure salary, while these guys are sitting home, whatever they're doing. You know, operating Ken.com or Al.com or, right? Dennis.com. I hear Dennis now. Dennis is on the radio. Oh, yeah, he's a ham radio operator now. I'm not making this up. It's a fact. I don't have to give out the last names of any of these people because they all know who they are, but I'm just telling you. They were my inspiration to become great. So I could sit here on the radio and lord it over every one of them. I mean, Al, please. Al, talk radio expert, who told me I, 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 I lost my talent. I was not as good as I used to be, and I would never succeed in Los Angeles on the radio again. What L.A. radio stations Al working at now? None. None out there getting a new hairpiece or a new gold tooth, whatever he's doing. But uh, working in radio, no. This is revenge, boys. Being more successful than the people who treat you like crap. The best revenge there is. Living well is the best revenge. It's absolutely true. And God, I love it. 1-800-5800-TOM. one 800 800 tom Here comes Robert on the Tom Like a show wide open telephone. Hello. Yo, Tom, how you doing? Good. Good. All right. Listen, I was listening. You had a lot of interesting topics. Uh, something I saw on the Spanish uh, channel um, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, let's see, the Latino community has increased, uh, has, has tripled in the last 10 years, right? Yeah. And the Latino people over there want to have a street name after Cesar Chavez. So they're showing, you know, how they go to meetings. And you see the the white folks over there of Portland, Oregon, saying, uh, why don't you make a street name Cesar Chavez in Mexico? Um, and I'm well, thinking, and is, by the way, isn't Portland, and I know we're on the air in Portland, isn't Portland one of those touchy-feely left-wing cities where... You know, it's full of a bunch of aging hippies and stuff. These people who consider themselves political liberals. Is that what they're saying? It, that's what they're saying. That's exactly what they're saying. You know? And the, the, th- the thing is, you know, somebody like Cesar Chavez, my father worked through his program from Puerto Rico to Pennsylvania and Portland, of all places. Um, uh, Dark skin Puerto Rican told me a lot of stories. Okay, that's one thing. And the last time I checked, uh, Cesar Chavez was a, a, a Mexican-American. Of course. And served the U.S. Army Forces. That's exactly right. Um, and, and by the way, he does, of course. As you know, he has a street named after him here in Los Angeles. Yes. I mean, you know, and, and to us, you know, this is somebody, you know, to us Latinos, is somebody that, that means something. And, you know, I mean, we got everybody else, George Washington. We have, you know, uh... Well, here's what? the thing. Everybody, you know, everybody is not a union supporter. Everybody might not agree for that reason. But think about it a second. Political liberal, Cesar Chavez was certainly a political liberal. 
And Portland is supposedly full of political liberals, anti-growth, pro-environment. Uh, you know, they vote for Democrats all the time, what have you. Uh, the unemployed among them listen to Air America on the radio. You know what I'm talking about. And, yes, and, and, and they wouldn't do a street for a liberal icon like Cesar Chavez? Outrageous. I saw that in Channel 34. In wow. the Spanish channels. And they're, they're interviewing all sorts of people. You know, they interview a, uh, a good portion of uh, Anglo people who are in favor of having the street named after the, the Latino, you know, for the Latino community since it has tripled in the last 10 years. They said, well, you know, everybody should have a piece of the pie. I mean, this By is the way, I don't know if you're aware of this. Many of the streets in Portland uh, have names that ended up being the names of the characters on The Simpsons. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Now, it, it, they didn't name the streets after The Simpsons. It's the other way around. Matt Groening is from the Portland area, uh, the creator of The Simpsons, and he took the names of streets in Portland, and they became the names of characters on The Simpsons. Holy moly. Oh, yeah. We've been to Portland many times. Well, you know, Tom, thank God I've never been there, and now, knowing this, I will never go. I've been in L.A. 20 years from Puerto Rico. I love it here. I love the people here. I love everybody here. This is the best place in the United States to live at. Absolutely. Yes, this is great. And, Tom, I love you dearly. You're like a big brother to me. Um, I am one of those guys since I was living back home when you first you know, started coming out on the radio. I didn't have the opportunity to listen to you, and I did everything that you say not to do. I got married young, had kids, and got screwed. Because yeah, that's, that's all I can say. I got screwed to the point where I, you know, I have a, a speech problem now because I had a stroke. Because everything that you know they, I have been put through put me in such a stressful, uh, at a stress level where I had uh, a stroke. I was in a hospital. I was paralyzed. Uh, I almost kicked the bucket, you know. So I almost jumped to the other side. But here I am, you know. And like you said, living large is the best revenge. And I'm going to do it from now on. I'm living large. And I'm taking charge of my life, and there is no way, no how, because no vagina out there is a golden vagina except my mother's vagina because I came out of it. That's right. And to all those young, young little punks out there, oh, I'm in love, because my love is, you know, the love that no one understands, because that's the way I was. The love that nobody understands, you know, the love that is going to last for You know what? <laughs> and they have the chance to screw you. <laughs> all right, Tom. You take me out, Of course I can, Robert. I love you, Tom. This is about us. She's so special to me. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. Tom. Like it. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom. Real Tom. I find you just an absolute specimen of um, complexity. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Shane, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, buddy. Hey, man. I'm calling to give you a little shout out, man. I, uh, I'm one of those guys who uh, claims they don't listen and they don't like you. Uh, but yet, what's funny is, is uh, dude, I'm the reason you're successful. I'm one of those guys who's in denial, man. And and uh, and and I'm I'm here to confess that I I guess I am a listener, man. We used to have a slogan at the radio station here in L.A. that said, admit it, you listen. <laughs> and not only that, dude, here's what's happening recently. When my wife gets out of line, all I got to do is show up at the house and just say, honey, guess what Tom Likas had to say today? And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I keep that woman on her toes, dude, because of that. And you know what? I'm here to say right now, man, that I am a listener. Uh, I don't agree with maybe just about half of what you say about marriage because for some odd miraculous reason mine's working out. And uh, but but you know what, man, everything else is right on. If I ever have to go through this again, uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it the way you say to do it. And if it doesn't work, dude, I'll just give you a call and maybe we can work it out. Sounds good to me, Shay. But hey, man, you keep it going, and that you're successful for that very reason, man. Because uh, well, you know why you're successful, man. Guys like me. That's right. Exactly. So, uh, we knew you'd come around eventually, Shay. 
Oh, man, I've been around for three years. I just didn't want to admit it, brother. Sounds good to me. Hey, send me out that Kobe deal, man. Send me out with him making love to that girl that he said he didn't make love to or whatever. <laughs> Here you go, Shane. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey. Hey. It's Tim. I just said that. Tom. Check it out, man. Remember when you were talking about the Howard Stern show earlier and how his show has probably changed a little bit since he went on satellite? Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. There's one big part of his show that he doesn't have anymore that you still have, and that's the part which is the listeners calling in. I guarantee you the whack pack that used to call him on the radio, you know, the crazy people, the weird people off the streets, they don't own a serious satellite radio. He's not getting the same quality of diverse calls as he used to. Well, we don't know that for sure. It's also possible. Uh, you know, Howard only works four days a week now. He runs lots and lots of reruns compared to what he used to run. And it's entirely possible that he wants to keep the shows generic. And by just interviewing guests and the people talking to each other, he has more control over, you know, what everybody is saying. But so that they keep the show's that, generic to be rerun later on. It was a big part of his show, though. And it was a funny part of his show. That's why a lot of people listen. That was one of my favorite parts is when he had some of the idiots call in and he just kind of sat there and made fun of them. I think that's how he met at least several of those people that he ended up taking with him. Uh, I think that's true. And, uh, again, you know, I'd be the last person to advise Howard Stern on how to do a radio show because he's been so successful and, no, so, right. and so good at it. Um, and, again, uh, I'm sure Howard uh, is as more aware than you or I uh, what drawbacks there would be to go experimenting in a new medium like that. Uh, yeah, I think, and, uh, you know, uh, he's being amply compensated for his trouble and, uh, uh, I, I hope he's happy at what he's doing. I really do. I'm sure he is. And, I, you know, I, I get a kick out of some of the idiot callers that call your show, too, as I'm sure you do. Well, uh, that's, of course, that's <laughs> that's what a lot of people tune in to hear. Yeah. You still got that going for you. I don't think he has it as much. His show is still great, and he is definitely one of the best. So are you, Tom. Um, congratulations on the number. Thank you, Tim. I'll leave it to your discretion on how you want to take me out. Well, you know how I'm going to do that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Elizabeth on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. I love you, and it's an honor to be talking to you. I wanted to call and ask for your advice on something. I've been married for two and a half years, and my husband and I have a great sex life. And he's been requesting that I do something along the lines of a dominatrix kind of setting for him. But when I ask him exactly what he wants and how far he wants to take it, he's really vague. So I wanted to get your opinion, like a man's perspective, on exactly, like, what that would entail, what would be pleasurable from your point of view. Well, that would assume that I like being punished like that. And uh, to be honest, um, I've never felt the need to be in the throes of a dominatrix. Uh, but uh, let's start with this question. Are you interested in doing that? I'm interested in pleasing him, and I don't really have a problem doing it at all. I just want to know exactly what he wants. Well, I, so the best way I can... to find out is to make him tell you, but if he won't tell you, He's now, just really vague. He he kind of just goes along the lines of, I want to be dominated, but I don't know, like, do I? <laughs> you probably at least want to tie him up, and uh, you probably want to uh, have the get-up that goes with that. Some little All leather right. number. And uh, perhaps uh, a whip. And uh, certainly if you head to, uh, uh, here in L.A., Hustler Hollywood or the Pleasure Chest, one of those places, they've got a wide selection of whips. All and, uh, right. That would and be a good so, way to get started. Would you take it into the whole, like, if 
this for you and this was one of your desires, would you take it into the whole role playing thing or just like leave it as? I am not. You know why I'm not into role playing? Because I'm not with anybody long enough to get bored with just straight sex with them. Role playing is when you are bored with the other person. Okay. You know, so, uh, since I can't have sex with a porn star, pretend to be a porn star. I'm sorry. You have sex with porn stars? No, no, do you, no. I'm 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 quoting like what people are like or what oh, they're I thinking, see. okay? In other words, a guy who's married and is now uh-huh. bored in his marriage? Right. Well, because he's married, he can't have has, theoretically ever have sex with a porn star that's right so he might say to you i want you to be a porn star i see what you mean Act we, have like a, what? we have a great sex life i mean it's not boring it's not like missionary every time but he just had says we were talking about fantasies and this is just something a long time fantasy he's had so i just wanted to get your take on how far to take it, and I guess you're saying the best thing to do is to really talk to him about it. Well, and if he won't tell you, try some of the things I suggest. Again, this is not my forte, and it's not really what I'm into, but try doing it in your own way, and chances are what he'll do is he'll say, why don't you do this, why don't you do this, but he probably needs you to get the ball rolling. All right, all right. Thanks so much for your advice, Tom. I have a young son. He's seven months old, and I cannot wait until he's old enough to start listening to you. He's going to be listening to you as soon as possible. (laughs) Well, in the meantime, you can hear Mommy whipping Daddy in the other room, and that'll kind (laughs) of get him wrapped up. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for taking my call, Tom. I I really love your show. Thank you. I do it as a public service here. All right, bye-bye. Thank you for the call. Here's Josh on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Josh, are you there? Oh, sorry. You busy uh, over there? Actually, yeah. Before I actually go into my topic, I want to help out the guy who couldn't take it being made fun of for needing real game. The best revenge would be just hooking up with either that guy's chick or one of his family members. Again, uh, I, do, I don't believe in revenge uh, by, by doing things like that. I don't, and I won't. But it works out either way, though. I mean, it's, it's two for the price of one. Too much work, too much energy focused in the wrong direction. Right, absolutely. So your, gonna... your energy should be focused on making yourself happier and more successful. Because uh, it, piss, it pisses off all the people who try to tear you down along the way. Right, right Ken? No, absolutely. Tears you down. I don't know how much you got going for you if you can't take a joke about a receding hairline. Ken no. knows who he is. Ken's been sitting home now for a while. Some time now. Over a year, I think. It's been a while. Ken, I'm in a studio right now. I'm at the radio station. This is a microphone. Have you seen any of these in a while? I'm gently caressing my microphone. Because I get to see a microphone every day. The only microphone you get to see is your mouthpiece on your cell phone as you call people and try to get another radio job. Yes. <laughs> Number one. Oh, baby. Yes, we've got sound effects down here at the radio station. and Oh, it's amazing some of the stuff we've got down here. Remember the radio station, Ken? You used to come in and, you know, terrorize people all the time and lie to them. Now, we're still down here at the station, and you're sitting at home. I just had to say that. <laughs> Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. That's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Or you can hear our show streaming live on our website. All you have to do is go to BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific time. It's blowmeuptom.com. More Friday wide open telephones coming up on the Tom Likas Show. Stay right there. The Tom Likas Show.